Hello, welcome to Elizabeth Reads. Today we have The Girl with Space in Her Heart. We are on the second chapter called My Sister. Right now, even though the atmosphere is as cold as an ice lolly in the Arctic and Topaz is glaring at me, I'd still say she might have got this wrong. You see, I know for a fact that Topaz has never really liked Gavin. Not one bit. From the first day she clapped eyes on him, she said Mum didn't need anyone else in her life. Not when she'd already had her heart broken by Dad. We don't need a dad replacement, she'd say. We don't need mum to be sad again when we're fine as a family of three. To be honest, I didn't want mum's heart broken either, but I didn't think Gavin was a dad replacement because he's nothing like dad and he never tries to be. He's just Gavin and they're as different as cheese strings and strawberry laces. And I like how they're different. I like cheese strings, but I like strawberry laces too. And that's okay. Once I got to know Gavin, I knew I definitely wanted to give him a chance because his heart is big, bigger than the Milky Way. I didn't think he could be capable of breaking anyone's heart. And he has tried his hardest to fit into our family. He's even tried to get on with Topaz by taking an interest in her romance books. She borrows those from Mum's bookshelf. But when he tried to talk to her about one of her books once, he got all confused about who was dating who, and Topaz got annoyed with him and said he should stick to stars because they're less complicated. Gavin laughed and rubbed his nose nervously, but he didn't say how many billions of stars there are in the sky or how complicated they can be. That's Gavin, being careful not to make anyone feel silly. Terrible Topaz gives me a death, death glare and crosses her arms. A tiny vein in her forehead ticks like the internal workings of a clock. And when she speaks, her voice is so high, I'm certain all the dogs within a one kilometer radius have heard her. So that is the catastrophe. Galactic Gavin is getting married to someone else and Mum's heart will get... Topaz crushes her fingers into a fist and shakes her head, unable to finish the sentence. I can tell Topaz is in one of her epic moods. To be honest, she was moody before, but since she started secondary school, terrible Topaz has been like a hairdryer with two settings. One minute she's warm and lovely, and the next she blasts you with an icy wind. Yesterday, she treated Mum like a jelly baby, biting her head off when Mum suggested Topaz could bring a mate home from her new school for a sleepover. Topaz said she had so many mates that they couldn't fit in her bedroom because you could hardly swing a cat in there. That's when Jupiter ran out of the room. I don't think he wanted swinging anywhere. I know whatever I might try to say about Gavin now would be pointless because terrible Topaz always has an answer back. And when she's in an epic mood, nothing can change it. My jaw slackens and when no words come out, Topaz frowns at me, insisting she saw it all with her own eyeballs and her own eyeballs are very reliable and that is why Gavin is not who we think he is. This isn't how a romance story is supposed to go, she informs me. By rights, there should be a big white wedding, but not to someone else. He's having his cake and eating it, she says with some authority. And you can bet that mum doesn't have a clue. Huh? I blink, having no idea why Topaz is talking about cake now. Meanwhile, Topaz's hands are flapping around like a flag in a storm, and she eventually announces, we don't need him, we're enough to make mum happy. Apparently, Topaz is looking out for mum, so her heart doesn't get squashed like a blue bottle under a newspaper. By the way, those are my words on the matter. Topaz's words were, if she stays with Gavin, mum's heart will be torn in two, like a delicate rose petal struck by a sliver of silver lightning in a thunderstorm. Personally, I think Topaz has been reading too many romance books. She narrows her eyes and flicks her hair over her shoulder, and I just about avoid being whacked in the face. With a final flourish, she declares, I know what you're thinking, Mabel. I swallow, wondering if she knows I'm thinking this is going to be a big worry. I wonder if she knows I'm thinking that I like Gavin and this can't be true. Casually, Topaz walks towards the door. You're thinking it's goodbye, Galactic Gavin. You're thinking we need to get rid of him as soon as possible. You're thinking your sister was right from the beginning. And you're correct, Mabel. Topaz clears her throat and turns to face me, her hip resting against the doorframe. I know what else you're thinking. You're thinking that your beautiful and clever sister Topaz is a hero for discovering Galactic Gavin's secret. And then you're thinking she deserves a medal or at least your share of pudding this evening. I definitely wasn't thinking I'd share my pudding. Terrible Topaz throws her apple core in my bin as she leaves. It hits the edge, thumps, and then breaks, falling on the floor. It reminds me of a heart broken into tiny pieces. And if what Topaz is saying is true, I'm concerned my heart will break into tiny pieces too. 
because I've lost dad and now I'm going to lose Gavin too. And that's the end of the chapter.